So you asked me about his memory. And as far as I recall, uh, there are two tenets about memory that, uh, two, two basic uh, ideas about memory that we used to uh, use in the field and in general in the lay public uh, when uh, we refer to the faculty, which is obviously, the, for me, the most amazing faculty of the human mind. Uh, one is that uh, memory is about the past, and the other is that memory is about events that uh, happened in real life. So if you think that this is correct, you are wrong. Uh, memory is not about the past, and memory is not about reality. And I'll try to explain. Of course, it's an hyperbola. Don't take it for granted. But uh, if you listen to politicians, you probably understand the second one. Uh, and uh, I uh, will try to explain the meaning of it. First of all, to understand why memory is not necessarily about the past, not necessarily uh, about uh, what happened in reality, uh, you, uh, it, you, you, you might wish to consider one basic element of memory, and that's that memory is not monolithic. That this is not related to me. No, that's fine. We can. Okay. I'll, I'll, you'll have a test on that later on. This is one way of, of doing it. What does it mean to simulate the brain, and why we must do it? No, it's not your no, no, I'm repeating it, so okay. I can. Really so memory is not monolithic. Uh, we have many types of memories. 95% uh, of our memory is a memory uh, that we use without even being able to understand that we use it. I'll give you an example. Some of you drove here. They used their car. They, hopefully, there weren't uh, lots of traffic jams. I didn't drive here and, uh, today. And uh, if I am going now to ask you, what did you do while you drove your car, uh, there is no way you can remember what you did. You probably thought about something else. You didn't pay attention to your car and to what you're doing with your car unless you saw a blue, I think it's blue, rotating light in your mirror. At that point in time, you start paying attention. So this is the major difference between the two types of memory that we have, two types of memory that we have. One of them is the memory in which we pay attention to the fact that we use the information, and the other one is the one that uh, we don't. And, and as I said, most of the memory that we use in our daily life is a memory that we don't pay attention to the fact that we use it. And I wish you, just before going on, uh, not to remember the fact by in the following way. I once uh, asked a student, and they told me there are two types of memories, one in which you remember the cup, and the other one in which you don't. So this is not what I meant. I meant is that uh, sometimes you pay attention to what you do, and sometimes you don't. And uh, one of the most uh, cherished memories in our life is the memory of events that occur to us in our own life. This is called episodic memory. Any memory, including episodic memory, undergoes a process of maturation. It starts with the encoding of the memory, with the acquisition of the memory, then it matures, and then it becomes long-term memory. In recent years, several labs around the world, including ours, have discovered that when you reactivate your memory, when you recall your memory, even years after it happened, the memory enters back into that situation in which it was when it was encoded. And one of the faculties, one of the attributes of memories when they are encoded is that they are very labile, they are very plastic, and you can change them. You can block them for a while after you can change them, you can alter them, you can modify them for a few minutes to a few hours after you uh, encode them. And now we know that we can do that also after we activate them, when, after we recall them. This leads to a very interesting uh, issue. Whenever you recall something that happened to you in your own life, you activate the memory, there is a very high chance that just by activating it, you actually modify it because you redeposit it in long-term memory. So the oxymoron is that the more you use your memory, the more it's unrelated to what really happened because you change it more and more and more. And uh, since I see you're experts in uh, the life sciences and chemistry, I would say that uh, maybe the memory, the strongest memory of all, or the most uh, faithful memory to reality is the memory that has never changed, which is the memory of an amnesic person who cannot remember. So we normally change our memories quite a lot. Now the question is, why is it that in the most cherishable memory faculty that we have, the memory is really not faithful to reality because it doesn't make sense. It looks like evolution had developed a memory system that is worse than even the hard disk of a window system. It doesn't remember well. Why is it? So one of the 
theories, some models that we have in recent years is actually is that, that type of memory, which is the memory that's most important for our soul, the memory of events in our life, had not been developed in evolution for us to remember. It had been developed for something else. What is this something else? When you recall something, you perform a mental time, tra time travel to the past. Try to think about it. When you recall something, some events in your life, you do a mental tra time travel to the past. While doing mental time travel to the past, you actually can also do mental time travel to the future. You can simulate events that might happen in the future. Like, for example, what will happen if I go outside and try to catch a taxi? I can imagine, I can have a scenario. Think about things that are more important than that. So we think now that the memory system, which is most cherished by us all, which is the episodic memory system, had been evolved not in order to remember necessarily the details of events in our life, but to enable imagination, to enable mental time travel to the future. So memory is not necessarily about the past, it's about the future. And if you have a system that has to simulate the future, then there might be an advantage to that system not to be very accurate. Because if it's extremely accurate, you are going to simulate the scenarios of the future as though they happened in the past, which will be exactly the same. Which means you are going to think that the past, the future will be exactly like the past, and here goes imagination, and if you wish to have some political connotations, you can carry them for the recession. Thank you very much.